picture this. You're a hacker. You're going about your day doing whatever it is that hackers do, when all of a sudden you stumble across a testing website belonging to your favorite game platform, Roblox. A place where they do a bunch of top secret techie stuff behind the scenes. As a hacker, you're intrigued, so you make it your goal to get on that website as an administrator and see what's going on in there. And after a little bit of working your hacker magic, you're in. Now you have an admin test account. Cool. And then you might get to wondering, could you possibly figure out a way to use this account on the main Roblox website? Surely not, right? I mean, this is Roblox we're talking about, a massive tech company. There's no way they would leave such a gaping hole in their security. Right? Well, apparently they did. Because it works. And now you have a Roblox admin account to your very own. Meaning you can do whatever you want to the Roblox website. What do you do? Yep, that's right. We're talking about the April Fool's Day hack of 2012 again. And if you're a returning viewer of this channel, I'm sure you're well aware by now that that hypothetical scenario I just asked you to picture actually happened. On April 1st, 2012, an anonymous hacker and his friends gained control of a Roblox admin account in the exact way I just described and kept control for roughly half a day. They gave people Robux, reversed moderation actions, changed text on the website to say silly things, pretty much anything you thought of when I asked you that what would you do question, they probably did. However, one of the more interesting things that they did, in my opinion at least, was something that probably not very many of you thought of. See, this was 2012, long before UGC accessories were ever a thing. Any and all hats at the time were created and uploaded solely by Roblox, and Roblox was pretty picky about what they chose to upload. There was a whole process to hat creation, and every hat needed to pass a strict set of standards throughout the process, from the idea, to the mesh making, to the text texture making and beyond. Some hats had to go through several revisions just after being uploaded, and some had their releases rescheduled several times or even cancelled altogether. As a result, Roblox had a backlog of several unreleased hats on their official account at any given time. And when the April Fools hackers discovered this, they thought, hey, now's as good a time as any to release these things, and so they did. They even made some of them limited, some more successfully than others, we'll get to that, and some of them virtually free. The catalog was a wild place to be that day, with weird new hats with wacky names and prices getting uploaded left and right. And now, over a decade later, we have all these hats on the catalog that were never supposed to be on the catalog at all. Which got me thinking, is that for the best? Which hats, if any, did the hackers do us a great service by releasing, and which hats were clearly unreleased for a very good reason? Well, I've created a tier list whose link I'll leave in the description to help us answer these questions. There are six tiers. Absolute garbage, noobish, meh, pretty good, W hackers, and Telemon worthy. So, without further ado, let's rank the hacked hats of Roblox. Starting off, we have the 2012 Skater Beanie, and right away, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in the absolute garbage tier, because what the heck even is this? It's pretty much just a toothpaste green blob with the year 2012 on it in big outward protruding numbers for some reason. If you look closely at its texture, you can see that they tried to get a knitted fabric look going on, but it's barely there. It's more like the ghost of a texture come back to haunt this hat from the grave. But even if you gave this hat a good texture and smoothed out its mesh, it's still a brimmed beanie, which is a trend that I'm pretty sure was dying out even in 2012. Over Overall, it's really no wonder why this thing was unreleased. Fortunately, the next one's noticeably better. This is the all-seeing eye, and it definitely looks a little weird in preview, but on avatars, it actually looks pretty cool and unique. It's at the exact right proportions to look like a natural cyclops eye. The texture isn't anything special, and there's some weird clipping at the top, but overall, I place it in the pretty good tier. Up next is the bowling crown. This is a pretty special item because it's our first limited item on the list. However, a slight caveat to that is that it has no copies. So remember how I said that some Limited's creations were more successful than others earlier? Well, what I meant by that is that some Limited items Roblox just left alone, while other Limited's, seemingly at random, had all their copies deleted. And the Bowling Crown is one of those Limited's that apparently didn't make the cut. I put it in the W Hackers category because it's a pretty creative concept that probably would have made for a great prize in some sort of bowling themed event, though the fact that no one thought to name it Kingpin puts it on the really, really low end of that tier. This next hat is called Bastet the Cat Goddess. It's our first Limited that actually 
actually stayed as a functional limited and currently sits at 110k value on Rollamons. It's also the only item on this list that's gonna get a brand new tier all to itself called I have no idea how to feel about this because, well, I have no idea how to feel about this. Like, for a 2012 hat, it's extremely creative and intricate, but then you go to put it on your avatar and, uh... I'm pretty sure the hackers must have messed up this item's positioning somehow because there's no goddamn way any sane person on the avatar team was like, hmm, how should this sitting cat accessory be placed on people's avatars? Oh, I know, let's have them stick their heads up its ass. So anyway, because of how cool this hat looks on its own, I don't want to put it into a bad tier, but I can't in good conscience put it in a good tier with that positioning. So this is where we're at. Okay, time to cleanse our palettes with everyone's favorite faces, C and Hi Guys Derp. Thank you, Ev1, for making these dynamic heads, by the way. Very cool. Look at their welcoming smiles, their pure complexion, their kind, soulful, knowing eyes. It's thought that these two faces weren't actually lying around in Roblox's catalog, backlog on the day of the hack, but instead created and uploaded completely from scratch by the hackers. And thank god they did. Or should I say, thank Sea Face and High Guys Derp they did. W Hackers tier, without question. Here we have Cat Eye Infantry Helm, another sad no stock limited. Though someone did upload a gold 150 Robux EGC knockoff with the addition of a giant <laughs> schnoz for some reason if you're into that. I'm a fan of this hat, it's very spooky looking and detailed, though when I first saw it on an avatar I thought the proportions were kinda weird, like the helmet looked a little bit squashed down almost. Then I realized it's probably just the proportions of the default Roblox head, which, fun fact, are not the proportions of a normal head. W Hackers tier again. Crazy Crown is actually a real limited hat that was released with 69 stock, because of course it was, and is currently worth 200k Rollamon's value. Surprisingly, Roblox ended up making a few recolors of it over the years, and it's now part of its own little limited miniseries. It's crazy to think that if literal hackers hadn't done a massive cyber attack on the Roblox website, we might not have any of these iconic limiteds. Well, actually, it's not that crazy because this thing is ugly. Like, it's not poorly made or anything, but what the heck is it even supposed to be? A lot of people think it's a reference to the hairstyle of the character Jinx from Teen Titans because of the pink version, but the pink version isn't the original. This weird wooden looking version is. And by the way, the reason why that haircut works on Jinx is because it's like twice the size of her head. This one is just barely wider than your head and it just doesn't look right. It almost looks like it was originally meant to be a haunted crown made out of wood from a cursed tree, but then it was hacked and Roblox had to scram to rename it and completely forgot what they had originally planned for it. Since it is so classic and is objectively made pretty well, I feel obligated to put it in the pretty good tier, but only by the skin of its teeth. We have another crazy item here, Crazy Skull, which is, again, not great. You know that thing that Roblox does with Roblox created accessories nowadays where they very clearly just buy all their models from someone who clearly isn't aware that they're making accessories for a Roblox character and so half the accessory clips through your character's body and it's like three sizes too big? Well, let's just say this accessory was ahead of its time. Ah yes, I sure do love being a normal human and having teeth that go down below my neck and constantly bite into my shoulder blades area. Noobish tear. Up next is Dark Assassin, and this hat might legitimately have some of the saddest lore of any Roblox hat. It's a limited with a value of 1.3 million Robux on Rollamons, and it only has 21 stock, making it rarer than the highest value Dominus is. So why doesn't this hat have more value than them? Well, a little less than two months after the hack, Roblox uploaded a package called Darkest Assassin, and it comes with a one-to-one -one copy of Dark Assassin, except slightly more detailed. And it's still on sale today for 800 Robux. That's right, this hat was made obsolete by itself. And it's also almost completely hoarded by Merely, who doesn't really trade anymore. The only reason he got these ones around a year ago was because he finally decided to trade them off his alternate accounts that owned them for a while before. In fact, he apparently now owns roughly three quarters of all available copies. The last time it was ever traded to a new owner was in early 2018. And it's been stuck at 1.3 million value ever since. Even though this item is perfectly tradable and purchasable, I genuinely believe it might never be obtained by a new owner again. Noobish tier for being completely and utterly pointless. A similar accessory is the Dark Knight Helmet. Now, right away, you may be asking yourself, why is this called the Dark Knight Helmet when it's clearly some sort of cloak hood type thing made of cloth? Well, the answer is, I have absolutely no goddamn idea. Also, why is that one piece of fabric in the back defying the laws of physics by curling up in a spiral on its own? No idea either. Noobish tier. Time for another face. This is Derp Face. It's another unobtainable limited, and it's a pretty neat idea for a face. I'm 
not entirely sure what that mouth shape is, but I think it conveys the word derp pretty well, so I'll stick it in the pretty good tier. This here's the Dino Bandit, and it's just endlessly confusing to me. It's clearly not meant to be a bandit hat. There's nothing bandit about it, but like the crazy crown, I'm also not entirely sure what it is supposed to be. It looks like a spirit Halloween dinosaur mask that you're in the process of taking off because it got too sweaty in there. It gets a fat noobish tier from me. Dragon Ninja Mask is another unobtainable limited, and it's a pretty all right hat, as long as you don't take into account the fact that this entire headband part clips fully inside your head when you wear it, and also wearing a metal mask would make it impossible to be sleek and stealthy, which is the entire point of being a ninja. Also, that Roblox up an updated version a few months later with a much cooler mesh texture and name. Met here. Up next is two pretty forgettable crowns. Elven Prince, a 100k value limited, and Emperor of the Three Thrones, which is still on sale today and costs 900 Robux. In my opinion, neither of these items is really worth it. Elven Prince is just okay, not much to say about it. And Emperor of the Three Thrones is somehow even more bland and also uncomfortably small. It looks like a wedding ring for your head. I put Elvish Prince in Met tier and Emperor of the Three Thrones in Noobish tier. Then we we have the explosive hair, which is very clearly meant to be Johnny Test hair. The only problem is that show is 2D animated and this hair is 3D. Looking at it from the front feels exactly like looking at that one Peppa Pig POV picture. Also the yellow color they use is pretty weird. It almost looks moldy, like the cheese from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. It's pretty obvious that it needed more time before release, so I'm gonna have to throw it in the absolute garbage tier. You might have noticed that we haven't put anything in the Telemon worthy tier yet. Telemon is pretty picky about his items after all. However, I think that's about to change because we've arrived at Gold Spartan, one of the most valuable limiteds on this list at a whopping 1.5 million Rolons value. I'm putting this in the Telemon worthy tier because I feel like it would fit into Telemon's collection of super rare items that he only awards on special occasions pretty well. I'm talking stuff like the Black Iron Crown of Ponage, the Crown of the Dark Lord of SQL, the Dusikar before it was made into a gift box item, the Kleos Apphaton before it went limited, etc. It has just the right amount of uniqueness, mystique, and rarity at only 44 copies and it's pretty detailed and cool looking to boot. Plus, Telemon is known to have a particular interest in ancient Greek history, so this hat is right up his alley. Overall, Gold Spartan is definitely one of, if not the coolest hats uploaded during the April Fool's hack, and I think Telemon would agree. I hope you enjoyed that hat, because we're about to go down several pegs with Hooded Space Lord. The main problem with this hat, in my opinion, is that unlike, say, the Dominuses, this thing doesn't have any darkness inside it, which I feel like it kind of needs if it's trying to emulate a mysterious, intimidating Sith Lord with his face cloaked in a dark hood, like I think it is. Most owners understand this and try to get around it by just making their head black, but if you don't do that, it is not a pretty sight. There's some weird clipping and alignment issues around the lower half of the head, the hood is way too thin, it just doesn't look Right. It almost feels like a Halloween costume of a Sith Lord instead of a real Sith Lord. When the hackers first uploaded this hat, they called it the Noob Hood, and in my opinion, once a noob, always a noob. No, wait, that doesn't work. Horned Beanie is a pretty decent item. It's definitely very emo, so if you're not a fan of that aesthetic, it's probably not your speed, but I enjoy it. Unfortunately, it's another zero stock limited, so it doesn't really matter whether you like it or not, you'll never get to wear it. Pretty good tier. There might be a bit of personal bias in this next decision with me being a horror fan and all, but I'm putting Memento Mori in the Telemon worthy tier. It's the most valuable limited on this list with 2 million value and just 26 stock. It's also one of the edgiest limiteds on the market, literally being themed after death as a con concept and having a cool Latin name for an extra demonic touch. You can tell just by looking at it on the catalog that it's not for noobs, and anyone who owns it must be really cool. I don't know what Roblox was originally planning on doing with this item, but whatever it was, I think it's safe to say that what the hackers ended up doing with it was probably much better. We also have a couple more hats that I feel absolutely nothing about to get out of the way. Ice Law and Melted Gold Jeweled Crown. Obviously Ice Law is the better one here, it's pretty generic, but it at least has an actual presence on your avatar. The Melted gold jeweled crown is barely noticeable because it only covers the back of your head, and it's also on sale for 5,000 Robux for some reason. Pretty much all 112 of its owners are rich and famous people with money to burn, which makes sense because buying this is basically the equivalent of throwing your money into a fire. Matt tier for both of them. But down a step even worse is New Year's Crown 2012. My main gripe with this hat is the complete disconnect between its value and what you're actually getting. It's meant to be a cheap cardboard crown, I understand that, and it fits the bill pretty nicely. It was probably originally 
originally intended to be a free or near free item released around January 1st, 2012 to celebrate the new year that Roblox never got around to releasing, instead opting for items with a black and yellow theme. Instead, however, the hackers uploaded it as a limited with 50 stock, and as a result, it now sits at 550,000 value on Rollamons. It's literally a cheap party crown that you could get a 12 pack of for like 10 bucks in real life. Noobish here for being a complete waste of money. There's also Ops Warrior, which for a long time, despite having just 58 stock and a value of 500k, used to have the least favorites of any limited on the catalog, and for good reason in my opinion. It's apparently supposed to be a knockoff of this hat from an FPS called Ghost Recon Future Soldier, but it's just really, really bad. It looks like if someone tried to make a port of GRFS for the PS1. Also, the OG doesn't have these weird ear flap thingies, so why they added those is beyond me. The whole thing is just a mess, and if you tried to use it to do actual recon on someone, you'd probably get found out, but then succeed on your mission because your enemy'd be too busy doubling over <laughs> laughing to stop you. Noobish tier. And to finish off our round of forgettable accessories, we have Prince of the Gilded Feather. Prince of the Gilded Feather is pretty much completely indistinguishable from all the other generic gold crowns on this list. If you were to scramble these hats and their names around, I honestly probably couldn't tell you which match with which. I also don't know if these spiky things are supposed to be feathers, but if they are, Roblox did a terrible job with them. They look like snap pea pods. It gets a solid meh from me. Alright, time for a slightly less mediocre item. This is the Scary Hood, a 90 stock 400k value limited. Again, there might be a bit of personal bias here as I'm a horror fan, but I think this one's pretty good. I like the face, and the hood is pretty well made, aside from the part where the fabric juts out a good few inches from the neck, defying the laws of gravity. When you look at it up close, the face mesh also definitely has some issues. Bro would have a six head going on without that hood covering it up, but it's not really noticeable from a distance. Another item that I might have some slight personal bias toward is Steampunk Elephant. It obviously also leans into the horror genre, but I also think it's just a very creative concept overall. I have no idea how or why Roblox came up with it, but I think it does work. Roblox even went so far as to put details on the inside part of the mask where no one can see when it's worn. And best of all, the hackers put this one up for only one tick, which was literally nothing back in the day, so over 3.5k people managed to snag this really cool item. It's similar in nature to Toxic Nemesis, another intimidating looking bio-apocalypse hat that was also put on sale for one tick. Though I guess in order to get this one so cheap, they had to sacrifice spelling ability. Both of these are definitely W hackers moments in my book. We're nearing the end of the list now, three more to go. This is Voku Dojo, and although I have no idea what it's supposed to be, I've got to admit it looks pretty dang cool and unique. It was released for 100 ticks, which was pretty much the equivalent of around 10 Robux back in the day, so like Toxic Nemesis and Steampunk Elephant, it was also quite accessible and over 1k people got it. Another W hackers tier. Hang on a second though, stop the cool music and turn the clown track back on, because if you thought we were gonna get to the end of this list without running into any more trash, you were sorely mistaken. This is Weremouse, and you might be wondering, Nitro, are you really about to roast a cute little mouse? Well, don't let his beady little eyes fool you, this little freak is wanted in 48 US states and surrounding territories. Bet you don't feel too bad for it now, huh? Anyway, pretty much everything about this hat is too small and spaced apart. The eyes, the ears, the fangs, which are literally so small they were barely noticeable at first glance, it all just looks like the first me I made on the family Wii as a kid when I discovered you could space out and resize facial features. It's also just generally a very low effort mesh, there was no effort to make any sort of raised fur texture, it's all flat except for these small bits on the sides where it was made slightly zigzagged to sort of look like tufts of fur. I'm sorry, but this little cutie patootie is going straight to the absolute garbage tier. We've arrived at the last item on the list, and fortunately, it seems to me that we're ending this video on a high note. This is the White Assassin Hood, and while it's very obviously not white, it's more of a fleshy pink, I'm still a pretty big fan of it. It might be one of the most detailed hats on this list. It looks very realistic for a 2012 hat, both in texture and proportions, and it would go great in any Assassin's Creed-esque medieval avatar. Unfortunately, it's another one of those unobtainable limiteds. A few people did buy it, but all their copies were unfortunately deleted. However, a little less than a month before this hat was released, Roblox released a recolor of it called the Hood of the Lonely Raven, which is still on sale today for 250 Robux and looks equally as cool as its white counterpart. If you're a fan of this hood, I highly recommend it. W Hackers tier. And that's the end of the list. This is my completed tier list. I hope you find my opinions somewhat agreeable, and if you don't, feel free to yell at me in the comments about it. Definitely a bit more of a different laid-back video today. I was getting a bit tired of so much research-heavy informational content, and I wanted to make something a bit more fun, so I really hope you enjoy. I don't normally ask you guys to like and subscribe at the end of these, but we are trying to hit 100k by the end of the year, so if you did enjoy it, why not hit those buttons? It didn't make my day if you did. It'd also mean you won't miss the BIG SUPER SECRET PROJECT that I'm planning on releasing around early to mid-January, so it'll definitely be worth your while. With that being said, I've been Nitro Lord, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!